Everyone in America pretty much respects the U.S. military, and for good reason, they're amazing. Most taxpayers like to think that the money that the military spends goes to expenses like submarines and ammunition. Very few think of sex changes and transgender awareness training. On the other hand, it's 2017, and that means transgender recruitment is part of what the Pentagon does. The question is, will that help us win wars? Captain James Hassan served in the Army in Afghanistan, and he joins us now for an update. Um, James, thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you for having me, Tucker. So it's, it's really simple. It's not a question of being for or against transgender people, I don't That's think. Right. It's a question of the Pentagon making decisions that make the services more effective in right. winning wars and defending the country. I don't think I should be in the military. I don't meet the standards, okay? <laughs> so my simple question to you is, does the transgender policy make the military more effective in its core task? No, it doesn't. Uh, Tucker, this policy is problematic for three reasons. First, there are the obvious privacy concerns, but second, it elevates identity politics over combat preparation. And third, most importantly, it undermines readiness by removing objectivity from our military standards. Okay, so, so under this the, policy... The second one, what does that mean? It elevates identity politics over combat readiness. Well, let me explain. So the Army has a very specific physical readiness requirements for male and female soldiers yes. uh, based on you know, like body fat, uh, height and weight, but based on biological differences between males and females. Well, under this policy, a soldier can change their gender in the Army's personnel system without undergoing sex reassignment surgery or any other physical changes whatsoever. So in the Army, a so what the criteria year old, as long well, as you say you've changed, you've changed. If you have achieved stability in the preferred gender and change your birth certificate, then uh, you are um, now a different gender. And for an example of how this plays into the readiness issue, an 18-year-old male soldier with 21% body fat is considered a liability and is non-deployable. An 18-year-old female soldier with 21% body fat is, is fit for duty. So if you have an 18-year-old soldier with 21% body fat and all of the characteristics of a, a male soldier, but identifies as female, he could be combat eligible when under the female standard, when he otherwise would not be, or when the soldier otherwise would not and be. And all these people are fighting the same wars, right? Sure thing. So, I mean, if, if, you're, if your only goal was to be the most effective fighting force you could, you'd have a common standard, wouldn't you? You would think that, uh, you know, under the issue I just described, and the example I just described, essentially you're combat eligible if you identify as the type of person who would be combat eligible. And, well, that's very millennial. That's not a really good way to fight wars. Again, the reason that nobody talks about this is because nobody wants to be seen as attacking anyone or right. being insensitive. Right. And, and I'm in that and category. I'm not attacking me, anyone. Me too. And I... Honestly, try to be sensitive. But Absolutely. again, the military is different from all other institutions in that it has only Completely. one goal. Completely. And that's to protect the country. So let's take a look, if we can put on the screen, of these are words from your training manual. All soldiers must use the barracks, bathroom, and shower facilities associated with their gender. Understand you may encounter individuals with the physical characteristics of the opposite sex. Okay, so that's going to all enlisted personnel now? Uh, that is force-wide. So everybody in the force uh, took that training. And I actually received the training manuals that I published from a female officer who was justifiably uh, concerned about the answers that she was getting from the Army about this policy. Is there, let me just ask you finally, is there anyone in leadership, civilian or otherwise, in the, in the military who argues that this will make it a more effective force that will win more wars because of this? Well, I don't want to speak for all servicemen, have you heard but anybody uh, say it? I haven't, I've never heard anybody say this makes us more effective. And I know the Obama administration's um, justification was that we had to avail ourselves of all available talent, but then you had a guest on the other night who spoke about, well, it's only going to have a minimal impact on readiness. And that is a pretty clear indicator that this is not making us safer. Right. In fact, any, any impact. Or, and by the way, everyone's so, you can't get someone to come on the show to talk about this. Thank you for being brave enough to do it because everyone's so intimidated. I don't know why. It's a difficult issue. The military protects our country. We all have an interest in this. Yeah. Thank and you very thank much. You. Thank you very much.